Brighter Days. Steve Brown has written about this very personal story, and thank goodness he has. I think it's one of the best books that I've ever read when it comes to dealing with grief, dealing with what it would be like to suddenly have your life when you least expect it turned upside down when your spouse passes away and you have four young kids. Steve, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Kate. So let's talk about, first of all, let's set this up as to what happened uh, when, your, when your wife died. What was that like? What happened? How all of a sudden did this tragedy hit you? It completely uh, out of the dark. Had no ideas of any health complications. Uh, we had a great family day the day prior. And in the middle of the night, it was one of those, of course, in the middle of the night things happened at one o'clock in the morning and I uh, heard a bunch of noise and I found her on the bathroom floor and started nine or called 911 started CPR and that was basically the start of the end and I was so ill prepared to deal with something like that so completely caught off guard yeah uh, so you so you have to deal with the shock you have the kids um, we're going to talk to your daughter here in a few minutes along with you but As you kind of put one foot in front of the other, you go through a a funeral process, you go through all of that. Now you have to raise the kids. Now you have to figure out all the financial ins and outs. Wow, how tough was that? Well, that's the part that kind of caused me to write this book. I was so mad at myself for being so poorly prepared. You know, you hear commercials on the radio and TV and they say, get your will and your financial state in, in place. But nobody ever tells you, be prepared if, if, if you're going to wind up being the survivor. And so I was just so aggravated with myself for not knowing this stuff ahead of time. But it's, you know, it's a little bit of a societal thing and that nobody ever teaches you anything ahead of time because it's sort of a taboo subject. And so I thought, man, I need to get the word out to people that, you know, there are things you can do and must do to be prepared for something like this should it happen. And the other part was I didn't know how to cope with grief to this level. I've had losses before in my life, but it was so hard. Even simple things like getting up in the morning, trying to get the kids off to school, trying to make a cup of coffee. It sounds kind of strange, but it it really was that difficult. But, you know, I I was blessed that I did have the kids because it gave me an inspiration to carry on with life and make sure that they go on and have happy and productive lives. So it was a a huge learning lesson. and, And I, you know, I never fancied myself as a writer, but I started writing these notes down of what to do and what not to do, and eventually it turned into a book. So I just want to get the message out to people, be prepared, and here's what you can do when it does happen. Yeah, and so as you said, you put those lists together, that's the sections of the book, certainly, and um, which is what I love about it, because you just flat out lay it out for everybody. If you pick up There Will Be Brighter Days on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, you'll find the things that you can put into place that will make it um, easier for you to deal with something should that happen. You'll, you'll be prepared for it. What do you think, and I know this is a big question, what do you think is the most important thing that you didn't do that you wish you had that you're sharing with people in your book? I think from a financial planning perspective, I wish I'd have had her better insured because we were a two-income family, and all of a sudden losing that that income, um, you know, that's just a black eye on me for not talking through that. I think the other thing is um, our will was not buttoned up like it should have been. We sort of got uh, at odds, I guess, over if both of us were to pass away, what happens to the kids? And so. You know, another black eye on me, we should have just settled that and had the will in place because you just never know. So I would say those two things, have your estate plans in place and have your financial planning done. And those are two easy things that you can give with an estate attorney and they will walk you through that. It's pretty simple. I've had to do it myself. There you go. That's some great advice. So we have Mary Kate with us, one of your um, children, and Mary Kate is in college, and she's written a section of the book called Through a Child's Eyes. Mary Kate, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. For, from your perspective, what was that like to go through this and and watch your family change and, and have to do the same thing where you, you have to 
help the other kids, I suppose, and you have to figure out how do you grieve. What what was that like? It's like nothing I could ever describe. It was in that moment, I mean, my life changed for forever, and nobody ever really talks about that moment, and I don't really think a lot of people lose a parent when they're young. So I, a lot of times I felt lost and alone. Nobody really around me knew what I was going through at school. Like they, nobody really understand, understood what I was going through. And I think the biggest thing is a lot of people were telling me how I should and shouldn't react. There were people coming up to me and asking why I wasn't crying and why I was, you know, happy in a moment. And I, that was the big thing is everyone, I had to realize how different everyone grieves. And a lot of people were telling me what it, how I should and shouldn't feel, and that was the big thing. But years down, I guess, going through more and more losses, I realized how everyone grieves so differently and how it changes through each loss. And I think that was the big thing. And is there is there this moment where you feel like, gosh, I don't want to cry, I don't want to do that because we got to, I got, you know, other siblings and we got to move forward and we just got to figure it out was that tough i mean it was the hardest thing i took on kind of the role as being i'm the second oldest but i kind of took on the role of being the big sibling and i wouldn't really show emotion in front of my siblings or even my dad because i felt like i had to like you know put on this brave face for our family and show everyone we're okay but in reality it's okay to show you're not fine because clear, I mean, we clearly weren't. We lost the biggest part of our life, and I think that was the hardest thing on me. It was taking an emotional toll, was walking around and acting like I was okay and not trying to show emotion to people. Where now I think back on it, and it's like, it, who cares? Like that was the hardest part of my life, and it's okay to show emotion. It's okay to say, no, I don't want to do this, or I feel a certain way. Is that what you hope uh, people who read the book take away from that? That it's okay to show that emotion? Make sure I that kids people, of any age? Yes. yes, I hope people see that it's more than okay to show emotion and that it's okay to say you're not ready to do something or feel okay to do something because I feel like people put on a brave face because they don't want to burden people with that. But in the end, it's going to cause a lot of more pain in the future and it's important to accept your emotions when you feel them and not try to bury them deep down inside. Wow, so well said. Do you wish that as a society we learn to deal with grief better? I think, I, you know, when we were going through this and still are, people are always kind of like walking around on eggshells near you and it was just people really don't know what to say or what to do because no one really prepares you for that, especially at a young age. Kids had no idea, even adults had no idea what to say to us and I feel like Society is very unprepared because it's such a difficult thing to go through. But I think, you know, it would benefit a lot of people if people knew how to, what to better say or how to act to people that are going through a loss. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. Kate, um, we'll go to your dad, Steve. Again, the name of the book is There Will Be Brighter Days. Steve, when you listen to Mary, Kate, and you think of your kids, you have to be proud. How are you doing as a family now? You know, we're, we're thriving. We One of the biggest things that I learned about accepting help, um, not that we needed it, but yeah, we needed it. We took on a lot of help. We have fantastic neighbors, but if you, the thing I learned about that, that with the help thing is you gotta let people do it because they wanna do it, they're suffering too, and it, you know, it, it, it makes you feel good to help somebody out. So that was one of the first lessons I learned is let everybody help us. And so, you know, the first couple of years when the kids were little, I was doing all the driving everywhere. It was, it was pretty tough, but we figured it out and the kids started driving. And, uh, you, I, you know, we're never going to be 100%, but we're pretty far down the road and thriving and living happy lives again. I love it. I love to hear that. Thank you so much for joining us, both of you. And again, you can get the book on uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, wherever books are sold. There will be brighter days, great messages, and what a handy tool for so many people. Thanks. Thank you, Kate. Thank you.